because just because you say you never been touched or you the self-proclaimed king of Philly, no one's the king of Philly. Let's make that clear. That's the stupidest shit I ever heard when people say that. A.R. Ab used to say all these people, I mean, you ain't the king of shit. You're popular in Philly, but you're not the king of anything. Because if that was the case, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be insensitive, they wouldn't have touched your son. Because the king's son would have been off limits. So all this street cred bullshit don't amount to nothing when you're a grown-ass man. So it doesn't make any sense. People, you know, so quick to kiss your ass, they're not going to tell you when you're fucking up. They're not going to tell you when you're out of pocket. They're not going to tell you when you're drawing. Anybody can get touched. No matter who you are, anybody can get touched. No matter who you are. Because if that was the case, and I'm not, I'm not saying this to be insensitive, they wouldn't have touched your son. Because the king's son would have been off limits. Just like you got a lot of goons here in Philly, Birdman got goons as well. And flunkies and people that... So what's the point of that? The back and forth dumbass shit for what? Then you got to humble yourself, Gilly. We know you got bread, brother. You all like, yeah, well, these niggas thought I was going to be a security guard at Ross and they mad. And, you know, you throwing the bread out there, bro. Like, well, I could tell you ain't had this much bread before. And I'm not saying that to be smart. You say you was always getting money. I believe you. Be humble because that money can leave. One day you could be up and, and got a bread, and the next day you be gone. Then your wife get to get, get get to enjoy that bread with another nigga. You got grand, you got a grandson. You got other other kids. You got a you got a wife, family, people that love you. Take that time to basically. Be great. And it's like, at the end of the day, that money don't mean shit. When you ain't got family, family is more important. Real, real family is more important than that bread. What's the use of having the bread if you ain't got key family members there? You living your best life, but your son is, is just passed. He said, bro, a lot of black men don't handle success well. I agree with you. They don't. Don't, don't get too cocky on us, brother. You're doing, you're doing good things. You know, you're a wild old salute, man. Don't get too cocky. Don't get too big-headed. You got some bread. You got, you got a couple M's to your name. That's good. That's beautiful. But that shit can be taken from you, brother. Just like that. That's the harsh reality. See, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. It can be taken from you just like that. Just like your son was taken from you just like that. Or you want to talk heavy like you can't be touched. Gilly, you got to humble yourself, brother. Humble. Humble yourself, man. You can be touched. Anybody can be touched because the king's son would have been off limits. Anybody. No one is exempt from a bullet. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. Bitch ass nigga, speak on my fucking wife, nigga. I had niggas come up in New York and get your ass, nigga. For real. That's a threat. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. Nigga, you come to Philly, you ain't leaving Philly. Who the fuck is you fooling, nigga? How you gonna come to another man's hometown and think you something? Think you gonna run something, nigga? All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. Nigga, I walk the streets of Philly all the fucking time, nigga. Ain't nobody gonna touch me. Nobody. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. Cause I can hold with these and I can hold with them things. So ain't nobody gonna fucking touch me, nigga. All that tough Tony shit don't mean nothing. I'm giving you this real tough love because I don't know you that well. Met you a couple times. I know your pops. I don't know you that well. Met you a couple times. I know your pops. 
I don't know you that well. Met you a couple times. I know your pops. I didn't grow up with my father. I, I know your peoples. I'm cool. I'm cool with one of your cousins, one of my mans. But I'm telling you this because I see I see the writing on the wall and I don't want it to happen. If you keep up with your arrogance, Gilly, and you keep up with that mentality, someone's going to kill you, brother. You talk about, oh, he ain't got no money. He, he lives an average life and, and blah, 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 blah. If I ain't got no money, how the fuck I buy a BMW? How I just buy a fucking brand new, well, a 2011 Mercedes Benz, nigga? Huh? How come I'm always flashing real cash all the time? It's not fake. It's real fucking money. So if I, if I, my lawsuit money should have been ran out, right, Philly Just? It should have been ran out. I got that lawsuit money back in 2010. This is 2014. The money would have been ran out, dog. Oh, he don't own new homes. Now, these are stuff that you were saying on Tyrone's show. This is stuff you were saying on the phone with other YouTubers. I'm not going to put them out there. You know who they are. So, that's hating. You are a hater. That's what you are. You are a fucking hater. Oh, he ain't got this, and his gas got cut off. Nigga, what proof of this do you have? Nigga, all the bills are in my name. They never got cut off, nigga. What you, I mean, this is shit that... This is how you can tell a person is jealous of you. When they try to say, oh, this person don't have this, or he don't have that, he lives in their own home. Philly, Philly, Philly just. You live in Philly, too. 80, 80 to 85% of Philadelphia are row homes. You know this. 80, 80 to 85% of Philadelphia are row homes. I just wanted to put that shit out there. Real talk. You know what I mean? Y'all niggas, you know, I've been sitting back letting y'all niggas do all these fucking videos. And I'm laughing at y'all motherfuckers because y'all niggas show that y'all jealous. And, and fuck you too, Tommy. I ain't appreciate that fucking comment too, nigga. Talking about some, uh, oh, you can tell us something wrong and we look slow. How you gonna take up for me? Well, I understand. You know, you still a little butt hurt from all that shit we was doing. We squashed the shit. That's the shit I'm talking about with y'all black folks. Me and you squashed that bullshit. Then you gonna take a shot at me talking about somebody looks slow? Yeah, well, I'm slow, though, but I'm slow getting this motherfucking money. So, I I'll be slow all motherfucking day. I'll be slow all day. Mmm. Smell like Christmas green. Woo! I could take... I can take all this cash right here, right? I can take all this cash right here. I can take all this shit, and I can go rent a. And I can go rent a five. And I can go rent a five a five thousand square house for six seven months or whatever. Over nothing. See, the thing is, he's trying to belittle me. That's why. That's that's why I pulled out the cash. Yeah, not What's good, people? Oh, I forgot something. My bad. My bad. Here we go. Gotta have my theme music. Now, this message goes out to Snake Loke, aka my number one fan, aka a Seth Stalker over Monty Cocaine Woodgrain, baby. This shit is sickening. I don't know whether to be flattered or to, or to feel for, fear for my life on my ass because, I mean, you a stalking ass motherfucker. I mean, you got binoculars. Like, you know what type of underwear I wear? You know what type of cologne I wear? You know what type of tube, uh, toothpaste I use? You know, you know, you know my feet size. You know every goddamn thing because you's a fucking number one stalker. You're like Gene Willis and Tyrone mixed together times twenty. I mean, the shit is sick, man. It was cute. It was funny at first. Then it was like, yeah, it's a little obsessive. I mean, I can see if we were going back and forth with each other. Then it's different. 
I don't even make videos back to you. So, I'm going to kick it like this. Snake Lowe is a woman. I'm, I'm, I'm about 90% sure Snake Lowe is a woman. $2,000. Two grand. If you come on camera and face me, man to woman or man to man or whatever the hell you are, I will leave you two and talk on camera. Real talk, the GOAT. Thanks for the 199 cash, man. But the way you're moving right now, my brother, you're moving goofy. You're moving real goofy. Wallo, I'm not going to tell you. Everybody's scared to tell you. You're moving goofy. You need to fucking heal. Because it, it, the way you're going, two things are going, it, either something's going to happen to you, and I don't want nothing to happen to you. Or people are really going to start saying, yo, this dude really sacrificed his son. But I, I, I'm peeping it, and I'm like, you're going back and forth like you're arguing with a Hassan Campbell. Fuck Hassan Campbell. We know he's a fucking clout chasing dickhead ass dick in the booty mouth. We know that. Hassan's been cooked by me and others plenty of times. We've been filleted that goddamn sissy a whole that big arm, big mama arm sissy a lot. Why even respond to that idiot? Why even care? You at a status now where you ain't got to do that. Everybody fucking with you in a good way. You out there with Coach Prime. You at the games. You with all the celebrities. You got it going on. Your rap career was garbage. Let's just tell the truth. Let's just keep it real. Your rap career was garbage, but your new career after rap is great. You're doing great, man. Okay, you wrote some songs for Lil Wayne. That's what's up. Lil Wayne right now is a monster. He's one of the, he's in the top five. You didn't make it in rap. 